stay in that space just for a, a little while longer. You're all I want, Lord. You're all I've ever needed. You're the breath in my lungs. Right from the very creation. You made us and you breathed life into us. Father, we thank you. You're all I ever want all I've ever needed. Come, Holy Spirit of God, breathe new life into us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. That was brilliant. Really blessed by the worship today. Thank you. In this um, space, we, uh, we've moved away from this idea that we take a theme from 10.30 and we bring it into 11. Not that 10.30 and 11.30 mean anything this morning. Sorry about that. Um, 10.30 into the 11.30, but there is a, there's a congruence here, but they were written separately. Because I want to talk about truth, and there's a lot of things around about truth at the moment, aren't there? In the public square, in the church, in our lives. And I just want to dwell on some scriptures about truth, and then pray into that at the end. So John 8... At verse 30, even as he spoke, many believed in him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth, do you know what he said? Will set you free. And so it's this idea that truth sets us free and sometimes you hear people talk about that and say well well if I tell the truth then that will be freedom that's not what he's saying and the reason he's not saying that is because as we'll find when we look at John 14 Jesus said I am the truth it's not about our truthfulness it's I am the truth we do need to be truthful as well but Jesus said I am the truth and I will set you free. John Mark Comer um, has written a book called Live No Lies. Um, and in there he talks about truth because lies are the devil's tactics. He is the father of lies, deception. He wants to divert us away from the truth so that we will go to destruction. We won't have the full life that Jesus offers. And he describes truth as a description of reality. And therefore a lie is a distortion of reality. Now to accept those definitions, we have to accept that there is a reality. There is something which is real, and we describe that in the way in which we speak of it. And so a truth describes that reality, a lie is a, is a distortion of that reality. So there is an objective truth. It's not my truth and your truth and we need to accept that they're all equally valid. Either it is a description of reality or it is not. And that is one of the lies of the age. Now, therein lies a whole search for truth and interpretation and, and whatever, and it's not an easy task. I'm not standing here and saying to know the truth is very, very easy. And actually, if somebody tells you, I know the truth, and everybody else is wrong, you need to be very, very cautious of them. Because we have to recognize the fact that, as Paul says, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. It's only when we see Jesus, when he comes again, that we will know the full reality of everything. So we're looking through this this kind of 
broken mirror. But it doesn't stop us looking. Now, Pilate was interrogating Jesus. He'd been handed over to him by the religious authorities. And in verse 36 of John 18, it says, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, to say that I am a king. You say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Because, as we'll see, Jesus said, I am the truth. And Pilate's retort, do you know what it was? What is truth? The age-old question. With this he went out again to the Jews, gathered there, and said, I find no basis of charge against him. And then the simple reason is, as I've been alluding to in John 14, Thomas said to Jesus in that upper room after the resurrection, Lord, we don't know where you're... Sorry, not before, before the, uh, before the cross. Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the truth sets you free. Now, the best lies are half-truths. And I had a little online um, conversation with somebody who's on General Synod, and he is a disability campaigner, and he was putting a question forward on Canon C43. Does anybody know what that is? No, I didn't think so. Um, the bishop's opinion about whether somebody is medically able to undertake the role of priest means that they can decide whether somebody goes forward for, for ordination or not. And the general, standard, uh, general synod question was going to be asking for clarification that the Equality Act 2010 makes this null and void. Because disability is a protected characteristic. And the responses to this discussion suggested that no one should be prevented from ordination under this clause. Um, I suggested something else, which the, the original person who put the post thought it was quite helpful in in actually asking the question. The 2010 Act means that an employer needs to make reasonable adjustments. So the, the half-truth is that you cannot discriminate on any grounds. You cannot make any decision on any grounds. That's not what the Act says. And the 1996 Employment Act allows an employer to dismiss on grounds of capability. If you're not able to do your job, then that is a legal grounds to ask somebody to leave. But you have to go through a reasonable process to do that. So it's an example of a half-truth. That our natural inclination is to cling on to the bit that we like and turn it into a reality which is not a reality. And we're surrounded by these. That's just one example. We're surrounded by these. Now, my hope is that, firstly, the advice I gave online was, was okay. <laughs> and secondly, that the question that will be asked will be more effective because actually the direct legal answer would be no. <laughs> and we close down the conversation. And my hope is that is the case. So here's another one. God is love. 1 John 4.16, the Greek word is agape. Is that true? That God is love? Yes. Does that mean that he is a benign Father Christmas giving out gifts to everyone's desires and wants? No. We would love it if that was the reality. But it isn't. And we know this by God's own self-definition. In Exodus 34, 5 to 6, he says, he identifies as Lord. He says it twice. Lord, Lord. 
He's compassionate, he's gracious, he's slow to anger, he's abounding in love and faithfulness. He maintains love to thousands and forgives wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Hooray! Yet, he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He is a God of love and justice. And so if we say, God is love, and therefore anything that I want, I can have because God thinks it's okay, is not a truth. It is not the reality. And so the truth we seek is, what does he want of us? And when we get to the truth of that, we can live holy lives for him. We're called, the eternal wisdom is to obey all that Jesus commanded. And therefore we need to find the truth. So I'd like to come to a time of prayer. And I'd like to ask some questions as we pray. What are the lies that we are living under? What are the half-truths that seduce us? What lies are words spoken over you that enslave you or lock you in? And we're going to pray, come Holy Spirit, under three types of word. The first one is the things that we say to ourselves, our self-delusion. And we all do it. Lord, help me to be honest with myself. The second is where we've had words spoken over us which are untruths, which have caused us a wound. And the third is the untruths we may hold on to, have been told, want to be true, but aren't about God. Is that okay? So I wonder if I could in, invite the band just to come up, just place um, something in the background as we do this. And then I'll hand over to you when we finish. And we do say, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Spirit of truth. Lay truth on our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. <coughs> and that truth is a name. And that name is Jesus. Thank you, Ben. So firstly, we're going to pray, and this is maybe the hardest one, which is the lies that we tell ourselves, the half-truths that we tell ourselves. Come, Lord Jesus, help us to be honest with ourselves, and to be honest with ourselves within the context of what you say to us. That is, I am a child of God. I am precious in your sight. I am made by you to be for you. And all the criticism that I might make of myself, you turn to praise of you. You made me. And everything that you make is good. I think God wants to say to people here today, you are good. I made you, don't argue. And when I made you, creation became very good. There are things to turn away from because we live in a fallen world. And I will perfect those, but right now, you need to know that you are good. It may be that those words have been spoken over you by somebody else, and it may have been a long time ago, it may have been recently. Come Holy Spirit, convict the hearts of the people that are here of the reality, of the truth.
and the truth sets free. So anyone here who has had a lie spoken over them that they cannot get rid of. This happened to me once about <coughs> preaching. And somebody many years later pre uh, prophesied over me that you've been told that you cannot preach. God says you can. I hope you agree in the room. And that was releasing. So anybody who's had a word spoken over them which is wounding, the Lord wants to show you the truth and release you from that. Come Holy Spirit. Finally, the truth about God. In 2 Timothy 4 it says this, In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge to Timothy. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke and encourage, with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Come Holy Spirit, convict anyone here who has heard an unreality about you and holds on to something which is not of you and reveal to them through your word, through prayer, through direct prophetic word into their lives who you truly are because if God says to us you are good we can say to him you are goodness itself loving compassionate slow to anger forgiving and yet punishes sin Come, Holy Spirit, speak truth and reality into our lives. Our own words, words of others, and about you. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.